Good morning, everyone. I'm Lisa Friesen. I'm the moderator for this session, which is developing a simulated domestic violence activity for online learners. Our presenter today is Dr. Jamie Burns, Professor of Criminal Justice at the University of Oklahoma, the University of Central Oklahoma. I practiced that and got that wrong. I apologize. In this presentation, Dr. Burns will share how she and web developers adapted a domestic violence activity from a face-to-face -face format to a simulated experience. I'll be monitoring the chat throughout. If you have any questions, please put them in chat and Dr. Burns will answer them at the end. So Dr. Burns, whenever you're ready, please take it away. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, everybody. Like Lisa said, I'm Dr. Jamie Burns, and I'm a professor of criminal justice at the University of Central Oklahoma. As an OSU fan, you don't, you know, the OU thing, I don't know. But um, anyway, so I am really excited to tell you about this activity that um, our CC team uh, provided, <laughs> provided for me um, as I was moving a class from the face-to-face -face environment to an online environment. So some backstory is um, I have been teaching victimology for many, many years. In a previous life, I was the director of a grant um, that helped students, faculty, and staff as they navigated domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking um, challenges in their lives. And so I've gone through a lot of trainings with um, this type of thing. And one of the things that um, I got trained in years ago was an activity entitled understanding the leaving process or other terms are, you know, why does she stay in these, in these relationships? And so the face-to-face -face class, um, so everybody gets a uh, 10 $1 bills. And then everybody gets five, what we call assistance cards. And then in the classroom, I make everybody um, stand up and then there's different stations in the classroom. So one is home and you'll see here, I probably should have screen shared this, but um, you'll see what staying at home costs you, right? So it's you, your husband, your two children, your cat or dog, and then there's no cost to stay at home. And then um, there's the family crisis shelter, and then it'll show what it will cost you to go to the family crisis shelter. And then there's a relative's home. And then uh, you get an apartment. And then the last one is that you can check yourself in to a hotel or motel, okay? And so when my department asked me to put this class um, online for online learners, um, the one question I had was how is, how is this specific activity? How can, because it means so much to the class, how can we put this into an online environment? So I started working with our CC team and they were so great. Um, they asked a lot of questions and they said, well, is it possible if we could come and sit in on this um, activity one evening? And <laughs> it was a 7.30 PM class. And so they were so great. They, I said, of course, there were probably about four or five maybe team members who came and just sat in the corner. They asked the students questions as they were proceeding through the, for, through the um, activity. Um, I'm trying to think. So let me share my screen and it doesn't look like, oh no. Um, Sorry, let me, I had it, I had it up, but let me, okay. I don't see where I can share what I want to share. So that is a problem for me. Give me two seconds, I apologize. I don't know. Oh, well, hold on. Okay. 
So the students get instructions and, you know, going into an activity like this, it's, um, it's important for students to, first of all, understand what they're going to be, to be doing. Sorry, I had everything brought up on my D2L and now it's kind of being finicky. Here we go. Let me do that. Okay. So I don't, maybe Brad or Lisa, it's not letting me, oh, there it is. Hold on. Okay. Here we go. Is everybody able to see that? Okay. It looks like it's pulling up now, Jamie. Give it just one second. Okay. I don't know why. I mean, it shows that it's up on my Internet Explorer, but it wasn't letting me share this specific screen. So I don't know. Oh, yeah. I see it now. Okay. Well, I used a different browser. So, so in this, in this, um, Obviously, with domestic violence, I think anybody needs to be able to understand what the simulation is about and how you should proceed through the process and all the stuff. And so the first thing that students get is um, very detailed instructions about what they're going to be doing. So you're required to make decisions as we go through certain events in the process. So and I'll show, I'll show it to you in a, in a second, but depending on the decisions that you take, the consequences will lead you to your final location. And so they're real good about, um, here's the start page and, and it gives you, it sets up the scenario in advance. So you are a 28 year old woman, you've been married for nine years, you and your husband have two kids, you own your home, you have your own vehicle, you and your children are extremely attached to the family's five-year-old pet. You work full time, but your check is directly deposited into a bank account with your husband's name only. And it, so it just kind of sets everything up in that way. Now, one quick note here is that students can quit at any time. And I think that's important for an activity like this. If it comes a little too close to home, they can choose to quit the activity. Most do not. Most go through the process. Um, so they click start. And then at every point, it'll show where they're at. So they have $10 in money. They have five assistance cards. They all start at home. And then they have an, an event log here. And then at every step, they'll, they'll um, choose what they want to do. Now, depending on what they choose to do that will lead them to a, another thing. So if somebody, let's say, chose to go to a motel, that might look different than if they chose to stay with a relative for every, every subsequent move. Okay. So let me, and stop share there. Does anybody have any questions so far? So let me show you the simulation. And so we can kind of go through it together. Mm. Kind of having some problems, it looks like. Let's see if it'll let me start it. Okay. So in a class, in a face-to-face -face class, right? So I would just read the event. So every Tuesday evening, you join your women friends and their children for a play group. 
While the children play, the women visit and keep an eye on the kids. And then you click forward, hopefully. Um, tonight, your husband's very upset, so you call your friends and cancel your, your plans. You are upset with your husband's increasing controlling behavior. So here's your first task. So you can stay at home and remember staying at home is free because it just is. You can go and stay at a hotel. You can go and check yourself into a shelter. You can rent an apartment or you can stay with a relative. So just for giggles, um, does somebody want to put into the chat what they would do? So at this point, you're at a, you're, you want to go to your friend's group, but your husband is not all about it tonight. He hasn't done anything. He's just kind of upset and you're kind of getting sick of his behavior. Okay. So Lisa, you say you're going to stay at home. So we're going to just say, we're going to stay at home. And most people choose that. So then it's a week later, you have plans to go to a movie with your sister. Your husband's not feeling well, but you decide to go anyways. He becomes angry, grabs you hard on the arm and pushes you into the living room wall. You're concerned because he has bruised your arm and the children witness the abuse. So then it's, what do we do at this point? So now that there's actual um, bruising on the arm, he's becoming a little bit more controlling, then what do we do? And I'm not able to, oh, here, here we go. So somebody put in the chat, but let's not stay at home this time. Just again, for most people would still, you're absolutely right, well, Melissa, but due to time constraints, let's, um, okay, so let's say we're going to stay with a relative. We're going to go and uh, stay with your sister. So what's that? And it shows you right here what that's going to cost you. So you're going to have one assistance card. You're going to pay one assistance card for help with the kids. So then you left so quickly, and we won't go through all of these because it'll take way too much time. You left so quickly that you and your children have only one outfit of clothes. You find that your husband has canceled your ATM check card. You need to buy clothes for the kids. So then what do we do now? So um, let's say you don't need to put anything in the chat this time. We're going to go to a hotel. So this is the cost for that. And so you, what you can see is like at every level, you're going to, generally speaking, you're going to have to either pay money or pay an assistance cards, sometimes both. Now you'll see here on the left-hand side, let me move this real quick, what um, you can kind of keep up with your money situation, your assistance cards, your location. As you proceed through the, through the, um, all the scenarios, there's an option for you to get a lawyer. That's going to cost you a lot of money. And if you've used your money up um, previous to then, then you're not going to be able to do this. That just is not an option for you. Um, there's times when you're staying with your, uh, with your family member and essentially they kick you out because they're concerned for their own family's safety. And so then where do you go? Um, all of those things. Now, because I don't want to take up any more time, I can just, well, hold on, let me stop share real quick. Um, let me see if I can do it easily enough. So the students then, they have to, they have to um, answer some questions. No, it's not going to let me, that's okay. They do have to answer questions, some more like reflective based questions um, about this scenario. So let me preface this also by saying, if they choose to quit either before the activity begins or at any time throughout the, throughout the activity, 
um, they will just have to write a small paper about the reasons why people stay in domestic violence relationships, because the point is generally being made. I will say in the, in the simulated activity, most people, most if not all, based upon the decisions that they made throughout the process, is that they do end up back home. And I think that's the point that we want to make in this is that a lot of times leaving is not easy. And so the, the reality is, is that a lot of people do end up back at home because of certain barriers along the way. Um, so they do have to answer some reflection questions in terms of, you know, how did you feel like physically, how did you feel during, as you progress through each stage? And most of the time I get responses. I felt really angry. I felt sad. I can't believe that this happened to me. I can't believe I would make this decision and this happened to me. Um, and then they're asked to reflect on, you know, why people stay in these types of relationships. It's a little bit different teaching this in a face-to-face -face class versus a, an online environment, because as a class, we could discuss at each individual event, um, I could call on people, well, Sarah, why did you choose to stay at home? Or Brad, why did you choose to go to a hotel here? And we talk in class about the reasonings for that. In this simulated activity, because they are going through it as just individuals, I get the reflection on the back end, but not as we're going through the process. Um, but but I do get it. And so from a reflection standpoint, they're able to, the students through their writing, they're able to, to have the time to think about, okay, this is how this made me feel. And this is how this made me feel. So they... Um, the reflections that I get are a lot better in an online environment because I think the time give it, it, it gives the students time to really think about some of the decisions that they made instead of in a face to face um, environment. So I don't know how are we doing on time because if I can, I'd like to. I have it's ten forty nine. How much time do I have until ten fifty five? Oh, okay. Well, I can answer uh, questions if there I'd like are. To ask, I'd like to ask one. This is Lisa. What program did you use to put that into a simulation? How was that built? You know, Lisa, <laughs> that's not I'm a sorry. question for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's my tech side coming out because I think that's really great that that was done. I don't know. Day. Is Brad still on the call? Is he still in here? I don't. I just popped back in. Apologies, I had to step away for a second. Brad, do you, were you involved in this? Do you remember? So I remember hearing about the project. It was mainly done, I think, by Robert Wall's team and the idea group that was over there. Uh, but what's the question in particular that was asked? What like pro uh, program was used? So if I understand correctly, it's built on the Unity platform. Uh, that's something that's a little bit higher of a level of a virtual reality and 3D environment building tool. But that was my understanding at the time is that they utilize Unity for the particular building of this one because it is it's a higher level simulation. Uh, you know, compared to, I think, what other things may be. And I could be mistaken about that, Jamie. Um, the only other tool I think that could be considered is Storyline. You may know between the two which of them that they use, but I think it may be Unity because I think it was a higher level project. Brad, I feel like they shielded me from a lot of the technological <laughs> stuff. Right, so, yeah, right. <laughs> no, but that, but that was the beauty of, I have this thing that I want, right? And the team came in, they, they sat through the face-to-face -face and they said, okay, we get it. I gave them the whole, you know, all the instructions, all the events, it's all typed out and they just made it work. And they had testers along the way in terms of, okay, if we choose this, then is this the way it's going to go? And it was just, it was, it took a while, but then the end product was so great. I know there was maybe some questions in the chat. Okay. Yeah, Melissa, they were a lot, I think that you're right. They were more honest in their reflections from an individual perspective at the end of, of the simulation. Um, but I also, and maybe you all can help. I mean, I don't know, it was, I do enjoy also the being able to interact with the students at each point 
and because hearing from others as well. So I could, you know, do a, like a discussion about it. I just have them turn in the reflection about it, but maybe a, a discussion um, would also be advantageous, I would think. Does anybody else have any questions? No, we have just a couple more minutes. So my guy, you know, just my last thing, you know, this is what I want to say is if, if you are being asked to shift to an online environment for a class and there are these activities that you do that really do mean a lot to you and you want to keep them is for me in my experience, reaching out to the idea team was a wonderful experience and they really kept the, the activity intact um, the way it was intended to be. So you can't, you don't lose moving, you know, shifting from a face to face to an online class. It doesn't have to be um, you lose all those things because you, usually there is a way to somewhat adapt those, those activities to an online environment. That is all I have. Well, that was great, Dr. Burns. Um, do you have any other activities that you're planning on going online with in your classes? Not currently. I haven't been asked to redesign or, or um, develop any new online courses. There is a, um, in that same class, I do have a, uh, it's a sexual assault. Um, it's more discussion where, um, we, I ask questions and it's kind of one of those like, okay, here's, here's the scenario. And the students can choose to green, keep on going, yellow, proceed with caution or red, you need to stop the sexual activity. Um, and that's done as more as a, as a discussion. So it's not, it's more interactive for the students, but it's also um, not very reflective in nature. So there is that too that I do, but it's it's different. It's not a simulated activity. Well, I appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions or anything, you know, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email address, I probably should have had it, is jburns15 at uco.edu. So feel free to reach out to me at any time if you have questions um, about this activity or any other activity that you're trying to develop. Thank you very much, Dr. Burns. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it's really neat to do make such a change like that and to get that it's still such a great learning uh, experience for students because it's really makes you stop and think as you go along the way and um, now for me if I was doing that I would try to go back and rechange my answers and see what happens you know <laughs> well so Lisa there are several students who in their reflections they say I wanted to see if I changed my answer what would happen uh -huh. in, in the end and again most of the time they're like I still end up at home and I'm like but that's <laughs> reality right of these types of relationships so it's it's frustrating for them and they but they also understand this was just a simulated activity I've never had to had the even additional challenges that some of these people go through in in their lives with getting out of, of a relationship like this so I think it's it's beneficial for sure mm -hmm. yes 